and welcome to Two Catholics Thinking. My name is Joe Cady, and I'm here with Brendan Bell. Now, if you've never heard of Two Catholics Thinking, uh, we just recently started this. Brendan and I decided to uh, begin to for film some videos that we would put on our YouTube channel. Um, and basically, it's just an opportunity for us to pick a topic of Catholic teaching and practice and kind of just have a conversation about it. Um, and the reason we felt it was you know, worthwhile to, to put these videos out there is because I think we've both found that learning really happens well in, in community and in, in, and in dialogue and in conversation. And so it's a conversation that is mutually enriching for us, and we kind of hope that maybe uh, those who tune in might uh, be able to grow from that conversation also. So uh, each week, each time we put up a video, we have a different topic. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the heart of giving and stewardship. So here we're in the midst of Giving Tuesday, and the question is, what is this giving all about in the first place? So we're going to get to that topic in just a second, but uh, before we do that, I want to just give you a little highlight of what's coming up. At 2 o'clock, um, Father Shea is going to be in the gift shop, and he's going to actually be working in the gift shop. So I don't know how well he knows how to run the cash, uh, the cash register and things like that, but you should definitely stop into the gift shop to say hi to Father Shea, and you might even shave off a little bit of price from the merchandise you buy. So uh, definitely be sure to tune in to Father Shea uh, in the gift shop at 2 p.m. So here we are for uh, Two Catholics Thinking. And so our question, our topic today is the heart of giving and stewardship. So Brendan, when it comes down to it, like here we are in the midst of, a, of an event saying, hey, we need you to give, we're asking you to give, but why ultimately? What's the, what's the point, what's the heart, what's the essence of why giving is good and valuable for us? Well, I mean, I think the, the first initial thing that everyone thinks of is, okay, but just the monetary need. And there is a need. Like, like we, you know, we need to support the church. We need, you know, uh, to support these programs and liturgies and, and, and everything that we do and the life and, and the working of the church. But it's not just about the, the material needs and, and requirements. It's also about um, the, the mindset and the, the, the mentality of, of how... I approach uh, my life in the parish, my life as a Catholic, as a Christian, that, you know, I've got some skin in the game, that I'm a part of this. And so I, I do that in many different ways about going to Mass and, and participating, but also in, in supporting it financially. And so there's, there's a sense of, you know, we, you know, as, as Jesus said, you know, where, you know, where your, your treasure is there, your heart will be. And so what you invest in, what you care about is what gets supported. And, and we show that all the time throughout, you know, if, if I really like something, I'm going to support it. Right. Yeah, I think that there's so many themes, I think, that overlap when it comes to giving. I mean, there's, there's this, this sense of, of responsibility and the sense of that we all have a responsibility for the thriving and the life of the church. Um, there's a sense of participation that, that we're part of this mission, and we all give in different ways. Certainly, financial giving is an important way of giving, but it's not the only way of giving. We can yeah. give of our time, we can give of our energy, we can give of our voice, of our resources, of our, of our influence. Um, and so I think that all these things kind of uh, overlap with one another to show that ultimately the mission of the the church is is advanced by all of us entering into that mission, um, and certainly there are, there's the practical side of it that bills have to be paid and things like that, and ministries have to be funded. Um, but even beyond that, I think there's a there's a goodness for me to give, and, and that in a certain sense takes precedence over the value that the church gets from me giving. Right? That that it's 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 actually beneficial for me to give. Why is that? Well, it's it's beneficial because like. We, we have a God of generosity. I mean, God created the entire universe out of just an act of free grace and love and chose to create that. And then he chose to create human beings that could, could share and participate in his creation, could be stewards of that creation, could care for it and, and be co-creators with him. And that was a gracious gift. And then when we failed at that, when we fell... He gave even more grace and more gracious giving. So the, we have a God of generosity. So, so he is giving us the opportunity. It's, it's actually a grace for us to give because it changes us. It makes us more like God, more generous, more caring, more giving. And as you mentioned now, especially after the fall, where, where our sin tends to, to lead us to close in on ourselves, right? Yeah. And to just be like, I'm going to take care of myself and forget about everybody else. That's actually the, contrary to the gospel. And so this, this call to, to tithe, this call to give generously, actually draws out of us greater virtue. It draws out of us uh, uh, greater uh, uh, holiness 
that actually then equips us to then be the people that, that God calls us to be. And I think that that's kind of the, the whole evangelizing kind of aspect, like, like the, you go out, out into the world, out into the, the, you know, the hedgerows and the byways and stuff. And sometimes we can't actually do that because of, you know, you know my, my physical li- li- limitations or, or my job or something like that. But by supporting something, by supporting a ministry, I participate in that. I become a part of, of that mission. I can't go to, you know, a missionary journey to China, but if I support that, I'm going in spirit. And, and whether I do that through financial or, or through prayers, like, like, uh, St. Therese consider her, she's one of the patron saints of the missions, even though she stayed right. in a monastery, right. but it was because of her spiritual participation in those missions. She sent her heart, even though her body couldn't go. Yeah. And I think you're right. You mentioned that it, it's a way of us demonstrating ultimately what's important to us, what's of value to us. And, and we do this all the time, like you mentioned. So, you know, I'm, everybody knows me, I knows I'm real into music. And so what I love to do is I go to concerts and, and part of the reasons I go to concerts is specifically to like support the bands that I like because I want them to keep making music, right? And so I, I buy their album, I'll get a t-shirt because there's a, I, I want to invest in what they're doing because I think that what they're doing has some value. And so hopefully, you know, those who are part of our, our parish family here uh, want to continue to invest in the parish because they value what we're doing here. Because really St. Timothy's is, a, is an amazing place that we, we are very constantly trying to think of how we can go to the next level of bringing the gospel to people in our community. Yeah, and I think that that's like definitely one of the 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 special things about St. Timothy's like like there one it's a very generous community and I've I've noticed that just in the, the like the 9 months I've been working here um but it also is because I think people see what St. Timothy's does that the, I, we we did a poll question a while back about um why uh, what what motivates you to tithe and I was I'm happy to say most people said it was just because they love love our mm-hmm. church but some people also said we included I see something special at St. Timothy's. And I think that that's a, a true statement, that there is something special here. There is something that you don't normally see at, at your average parish. And that's not to you know, bad mouth other parishes or anything sure. like that. But that there's something unique. And so that is, is a motivation. That is something to say, I like what I see here. I want to see more of it. Yeah. I think that there's, again, this idea that part of the reason why the church wants us to have a sufficiency of, of bodily goods in life is, is so that we have the ability to have, like, something that we can give away to others. Because, again, we're, our lives were made to, to be an, an offering for the good of the other. Even Jesus himself said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Um, because it's ingrained within us this idea that, that everything that, that God pours into us ultimately should be used in a way that serves not just our own good, but the good of others. But without us having like uh, the, the basic necessities of life present to us, um, we can't participate. But the, like you said, we all participate in different ways. There are things yeah. that I can do that other people in the church can't do. And there's things that other people can do that I'll never be able to do. And I think that, like you mentioned, there are some people that go on mission trips that I might be able to fund, even though I could never do that. That person going might never be able to fund a mission trip, but they're the ones that have the time and the ability to, to enter into that. And so I think that um, there's this beautiful sense of the body of Christ at work, and we all participate in different ways. And giving and tithing is one of the ways that we can really uh, participate in that. I remember I had a priest who uh, said once that ultimately uh, tithing, tithing has very little to do ultimately about the money. Yeah. <laughs> it has to do with the heart. And I think a big piece of that is trust. Because I think that anybody who, you know, especially during these difficult times, you could easily find a million reasons to say, I can't afford to tithe right now. And, and that might be true, like looking at it kind of just from the outside. But in a certain sense, you know, I, we can't afford not to tithe. <laughs> like, I can't afford to like to not place my trust in the Lord and say, look, I don't know how you're going to make this work, but I know you're going to make this work. And, and I think it's, again, it's not about the quantity, you know, it's about the disposition of the heart. It's about a, a heart that joyfully gives because it trusts in the Lord. Yeah, I, I did some uh, fundraising uh, a while back and, and in the training for doing the fundraising, one of the things we were always talked about was like, don't treat people like an ATM machine. It's not about the money. It's about a relationship. It's about inviting someone into the mission. You, here, I have this, this incredible vision of what I want you to be a part of. And I think there is an incredible vision here at St. Tim's. I want you to join it. I want you to be a part of it. And it's not like, you know, just a one-way street kind of thing. It's not just, okay, here, give me some money and oh, I'm gone. It's about staying connected, staying in, involved. And I think that that's kind of in part what was inspired the, the, this whole live stream event was that 
we didn't just want to like you know put out uh, you know hey you know donate. We wanted to to, to participate. We wanted to engage, and and I, and I I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's a lot of work, but it's 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 it's, it's, it's a great way to celebrate St. Timothy's as well as to support it. Right, exactly. And I like the, the whole theme of, of we're looking backwards of, of the people that invested in our parish for many years before you and I were ever here that made our presence here possible now and, and how we are now the people today that God has put in place to enable the church to exist for the next 20 years and to, to truly like transform the world. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. We're not just investing in, in like the maintenance of the parish. We're investing in the mission of the church. We're investing in the mission of the gospel going forth um, because we take great care in how we use the resources that we have as a parish and, and, and try to funnel those always towards the evangelizing efforts of, of the church. And it's, it's interesting because like for me being a new parishioner, a new staff member here, like, like it's, it's great to see that this heritage that I've been entrusted with of those that, that supported the church that, 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 that built this, that, this church and here at St. Timothy's. And it also makes me think back of the church overall. Like, like I think back to St. Paul and, and, you know, all of his letters and his missionary journeys he was also collecting funds to send back to the Church of Jerusalem because Jerusalem was a poor church, and so like so there, there's this great tradition of of this giving, this generosity, or even going back to to Acts where the people would bring their their gift, their, their they'd sell their land and bring the money to to the to the apostles because it was a sense that that God has given me this abundance to give to others, and as you said earlier about you know. There, that's a real one of the real objections to poverty, is that it, it prevents you from being able to give and right. be generous, and that's that's one of the great gifts uh, right. that 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 we have, um, to to have that opportunity to say, to share with others the the gifts that God has given us. Yeah, the Catechism actually says that God has made us to depend upon one another, right? So, so God intentionally gave you gifts that He didn't give to me, because if I if I think I have everything that I need to be self sufficient. It, that leads to pride, which leads to very, very, very bad things, right? And so there's a goodness in me of recognizing that I need you and you need me, that, that you're responsible for my good just in the same way that I'm responsible for your good. And so there's this, we rise and fall together, that, that, that if one part suffers, as St. Paul says, the whole body suffers. And so this is where God calls us to, what, to whatever extent we're able to, to use our time, our talent, our resources, our influence in a way that builds up the body of Christ. And that won't look the same for every person. It won't even look the same for every person at every stage throughout yeah. their life. Um, so, you know, I always joke with people, one of my contributions to the mission of the church right now, having eight children, is raising good little eight children, right? Like, like <laughs> raising little saints that can go forth into the world as instruments of transformation. When they're all out of the house, hopefully that'll happen someday. When they're all out of the house, um, my ability, my time will be different. And so my, the way I can participate in the life and mission of the church will look different at that time, you know? And I can relate to that because, like, in, in my, like... When I was in the seminary, I was the recipient of a lot of generosity and people donating and supporting different things. And, and you know, I, you know, as a seminarian, you don't have any money. You, you have a stipend. <laughs> it is like, like, it's really hard. You feel weird. Like, I can't donate to anything. Um, and you're like, wait a minute, what am I donating to? Like, I'm taking money that somebody gave to me. So it was kind of a weird situation. So I'm, in that time, the, the invitation for me was to receive, to receive right. whatever gifts were given and stuff. Now, as I'm working and I'm, I'm starting to, to earn some money, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm given that opportunity to say, you know what, okay, I'm, I'm in that financial place to, to, to donate and to give. And it's a responsibility and it's kind of like, okay, where do, I get, where do I donate to? Or like there's so many good causes and so many good things. But it's also just a, a gift to have that opportunity, knowing that I didn't have that opportunity before. And I think that raises a really interesting point. I, I know a lot of people that are really – have very generous hearts and they, they're always looking for opportunities to help others and serve others, you know, meals for people when they have a baby, you know, or helping people if they get laid off of work, things like that. Um, but oftentimes those, those same people can be very hesitant to receive help from others. Mm. Um, and there's a goodness in allowing other people to help us also. Like even in the sense of like we're depriving them of – like responding to God's call to generosity when we don't allow people to help us, you know? And so um, there's a goodness in this like ebb and flow of like uh, care for one another that, that there's going to be times when we are able and, 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 and moved to, to, to be of service and help to others, but there's going to be times when we're in need and we need to allow others to, 
be of service and, and, of, and of aid to us also. And I think that that's just a, a kind of a reflection of the life of the Trinity, you know, the Father giving himself to the Son, the Son receiving that, that love of the Father and, and returning that love in kind and, and, and that love between them being the Holy Spirit. It's like, it's, it's, it's not a, uh, a give and take, as they say. It's, it's a give and receive. Mm. It's a reception. It's, it's something that, that I'm allowing this love to be poured into me. And I accept that, and then I pour that love back out. And just as like the the, you know, the scripture says that the the Father's love has been poured into our hearts, and we receive that, and then we in turn pour that out to others. Yeah, and I, I have a priest friend who once said, or used to always say that you know God is never outdone in generosity, and that always just really rang in my heart like this idea of. Um, we're not in competition with God to see who can be more generous because he's always, yeah, yeah. always going to win. Um, and so we're, we're generous not because it earns God's love or it makes God love us more, you know, um, but simply when we recognize the, the free, gracious gifts that God has given to us, um, the only adequate response is, I'm going to try to give some back, you know. Um, and again, we see this reflected in relationships. I see this reflected in, in you know, my relationship with my wife. You know, when I know how much she loves me despite knowing all my faults, you know, there's like, it makes me want to be better. It makes me want to try harder. It makes me want to give more of myself to her um, because I know that, that I do so not as a way of manipulating her to, to, to pay me back with love, um, but simply because I know the love that has been poured into me, you know? Yeah, I think, I think this was like, I forget who said this. I think it might be Chesterton, but that's just because I'm constantly reading it. <laughs> um, but it was like, like uh, the idea, he was, he was criticizing those that were, were saying like, you know, all the, the penances and, and practices in the, in the church, like wh why would you, you know, extort these things that God is so mean and stuff. And it's like, it would be like somebody looking at like a husband and wife and like, whoa, she extorts chocolates and flowers <laughs> and stuff. And it's like, it's because of that love that you respond in those acts of generosity. Right. You realize that I've been loved and it's not like I'm trying to earn it. It's because I know these, these small little things can't possibly return the love that I've received. Right. But it's an expression of, I recognize that love. I want to give in return. Mm -hmm. So how, where does stewardship fit into all of this? You know, we hear that word sometimes. It's kind of a churchy word. Uh, we, you know, what, what is stewardship and, and how does that fit into this whole concept of giving? Well, I think that the, the stewardship is that, that recognition that, you know, when God created Adam, he placed him in a garden. He placed him in a space and gave him a mission to care for it, to care for that garden. And so that stewardship that... that it's not something that I, the things that we have in this world are not ours. They're loaned to us. They're entrusted to us. Um, I know C.S. Lewis in Mere Christianity talks about this, like about, he uses the metaphor of a ship, like like my life going through more, making moral choices. I, I, you know, my life is like a ship, but I'm not the captain. I'm, I, I may be piloting it, but there's another owner that right. this belongs to. And so I have to make those decisions and those care, you know, making sure that I care for it because someday the, the landlord is going to show up and say, hey, how did you manage my property? Right. How did you care for this that, that I entrusted you? Right. Yeah, I think of it as, you know, to, to possess ultimately makes someone responsible, right? So, so whatever I call mine, that makes me all the more responsible for what I do with it, you know? So, okay, this is yours. What, what now, right? What does that look like now? I think of that in terms of my children, right? I recognize my children are not, not my own. And so my job is to present them back to the Lord in a way that gives him honor and glory. I, I think this whole idea of stewardship, which is joyfully receiving God's gifts and acting upon them in a way that gives him honor and glory, is reflected very beautifully in the Mass, where we take bread and wine, which is fruit of the earth, it says, right? Like, like fruit of what God has embedded in creation. Um, we've acted upon it through our own creativity and ingenuity as human beings, and we've created bread and wine. And now we're taking what we've made and we're using it in the highest form of praise to give back to the Lord in the offering of the Eucharist. So it's like there's this beautiful, I think, uh, metaphor or imagery of, of what stewardship looks like. Do we receive what the Lord gives us with joy? Do we act upon it in res with, with responsibility? And do we seek to present it back to the Lord in a way that gives him honor and glory? And I love that the, the image of the bread and wine. These are so simple staples of human uh, food and drink, yet they're ones that can be so complex. Like, like wines can be, you know, you know, really, really good wine and really bad wine. They can be really artisan quality bread. And yet there's like, like, you know, there's wonder bread. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so even in those, those simple things, they there, there's more 
subtlety of, of love and preparation that can be brought into them. Mm-hmm. Yet that simple thing is elevated beyond anything that we could possibly put into it. You could make the best wine and it would never approach right. the blood of Christ. Right, you could make right. the best bread and it would never be the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And and so that abundance, like you said, God will not be outdone in generosity. Like, like he takes what we have, even the simplest, humblest things that we give him, and he makes them spectacular. Right. Yeah, and I think so that, that could be, you know, a takeaway from this conversation today is, what is God calling me to do with what he's given me? And, and, and again, not even just with it in terms of financial resources. Certainly, with Sparta Giving Tuesday, we're hoping that people will give, and we're hoping that everybody will give something, right? It's just as a way of, hey, I'm, I'm in. I'm part of this mission. Um, but even beyond that, even looking past today, I think it could be beneficial for us to spend some time and, and really think, okay, how has God blessed me? with the things I have, with the talents I have, with the time I have, with the community I have, how has God blessed my life? And what ultimately is he calling me to do with it? You know, I, I shared recently with, with in another context, um, a priest I knew that, that worked once, uh, worked with the indigenous mind community in, in Latin America. And he said that they, they believed that God didn't bless individuals, but that God blessed communities through individuals. And that was always just a truth that just it just stirred in my heart something where I was like, that seems right, right? This idea that, that God doesn't give me a blessing so that I can look in the mirror and say, look at me, aren't I blessed? Certainly we are blessed, right, beyond measure. But God pours this into us so that we can become a blessing for somebody else. I think Bishop Barron calls this like the loop of grace, right? Like mm-hmm. we only possess something to the extent that we give it away. And whenever we try to like hoard it, hold on to it for ourselves, it like fizzles out of our grasp. Um, so I, I well, think that... It's like, um, uh, I remember somebody who talked about this in like the... I forget where I heard this, but it was uh, something about the difference between uh, the Sea of Galilee and the, and the Dead Sea. That the Sea of Galilee, you know, the waters of the Jordan flow into it, but then they flow back out and it produces life. But of the waters, uh, I think it was Matthew Kelly that said this, but the Dead Sea, it stops, it holds mm. it. The, the water doesn't flow back out. And you see this all over the place in rivers and stuff where stagnant water is not good. It doesn't, it, it becomes poisonous right. unless it flows out and flows forth yeah. into to new life and passing on the life to, to another area. That's beautiful. So we want to offer an opportunity. I, we only have a little bit of uh, time left, but for those who are viewing, if, if you have any questions, you can certainly type them in the chat. We'd be happy to field any questions that people might have. But um, this really gives you a taste of what Two Catholics Thinking is about. Um, we do not presume to know everything. We do not presume to be experts on the topics that we, that we talk about. It's literally just two guys that are thinking through the faith, trying to understand it better, trying to understand its implications for our life better. And so every couple of weeks, we, um, we put up a new video. Um, if you're interested in checking out those videos, you can go to the St. Tim's YouTube channel and um, there's a playlist. You can click on the playlist section and you'll see a Two Catholics Thinking playlist um, and it'll have all the videos uh, that we have. And like I said, every couple weeks we offer a, a new one. So I don't know, Lisa, do we have any questions? Can you tell Mr. Awesome that we're still seeking one more $1,000 donation? Yes. Mr. Awesome, is that me or is that Brendan? It's, it's unclear. It could be, it could be either one of us. Oh, he's Mr. Awesome. I got it. All right. Well, all from awesome. one Mr. Awesome to another, um, we are we are seeking um, one more one thousand dollar donation. With that one thousand dollar donation, Father John will come to your house with some like Royals Royce uh, hot dogs, some some premium hot dogs that he will come and grill for you. Um, I've I've had like. Father John's okay hot dogs, and they're outstanding. So whatever these are, I'm sure are worth close to $1,000. So um, we're looking for one more $1,000 donation for sure. Awesome. So how can I live out the outward mission during this time of the pandemic we are in? Mm. Yeah. Good question. That's a good one. Do you want to jump on that? <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, nice tee up right there, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I guess like like yeah, it's it's difficult because like you don't know where to go, you don't know where um to to where can I go, where can I find that opportunities and stuff. Um but I mean I think the first thing I would say to that is is pray for that openness. Pray for that like like awareness, like Lord, open my heart, open my eyes, let me to see where I'm supposed to go. And if you put yourself in that 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 spirituality, that, that, that mindset, then you're going to see where God's going to speak because he's going to bring those opportunities to you, um, when you least expect them. And so I think that that's where, if you're just opening your eyes, then, then they're going to come. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the, it it is weird to think about that 
that these opportunities provide new opportunities, right? And so there, there's silver linings, and, and not that, you know, we're, we're glad that this pandemic has happened, right? But I know that one of, one of my best friends, um, we set up like a Zoom happy hour, you know, one day. I was like, we haven't connected, and, you know, let's, let's just kind of check in and see how each other's doing. And we had never done that before. He lives in another state, and I, I could have easily done that at any time, but I never even thought to do it, except during this time when we're all kind of just kind of, you know, more isolated than, than maybe we are under normal circumstances. And so I think to creatively think about some of those some of those times. And so we could be a little bit more intentional with the relationships that we engage with, intentional with reaching out to family members who we know might be lonely, friends who might be lonely. We can be intentional on how we kind of use our time and our voice on social media as, a, as kind of a, a voice of hope, a voice of encouragement. Um, and so I think you're, you're absolutely right to, to really to listen to what God is calling us to do um, and, and to be creative. You know, the spirit is creative and the spirit is always doing new and unexpected things um, in our lives. And I think that there's something in, in the fact that we're, you know, we're so used to doing in our social media world and everything, everything's on demand. It's instant. I can go and instant gratification on all of that and everything comes to me. I think what this, this pandemic has kind of caused us to do is I have to go out. I have to start making an effort to do that. And I, I, I hold myself accountable on that because it's so much easier to just stay home and watch TV. But it, it's, it's, it's making us be more intentional mm -hmm. about what we do, how we do it, and especially in our relationships, especially in saying, okay, well, I can't just run into someone, you know, in, in, at, at, you know at different places because mm -hmm. nobody's out and doing those things. I mean, maybe a little bit more now, but... I think it, it requires us to, to, to pay attention and take action a little bit more intentionally. Yeah, and I think sometimes we forget that, like, we know how to ride the bike, you know? Like, uh, like yeah. we can become very dependent upon the training wheels, and, and, and the church is meant to be those, that guide rail for us to guide us in our walk with the Lord. But at the same time, we know how to pray. We know how to pick up a Bible. We know how to go on Amazon and, get, and find a book that, on spirituality. We know how to call somebody up and say, hey, can I ask you to pray for me for this, that, the other thing? So, so there's a certain sense in which... Now is the time for us to say, hey, you know what? I can do this. I can still do this in community. I'm still connected to the body of Christ, but I can pray at home with my family. I can pray at home with my friends. I can send a text message to a friend of mine, to, you know, like an accountability partner or like a prayer partner that we can have. So we can kind of take steps to do these things even on our own, um, which I think ultimately is part of the goal of, of the mission of the church, right? We want to form you here and then send you out. Like literally the last thing we hear every mass is go, get out of here, go, right? Mm -hmm. Don't stay. And like we're, we're, we're meant to be filled up and now intentionally set forth into the world. And if you don't know how to pray or don't know how to read the Bible or something, that's an opportunity right there. Saying right. like, like to be vulnerable and to, you know, go find a friend that, that right. you know that you think is, is a, a fairly, you know, knowledgeable Catholic or something and say, hey, help me in this. Right. And that becomes an opportunity. You're giving them an opportunity to be, be generous. Absolutely. And obviously, we're always here for you guys as, as uh, the staff. We're here. To, we're, we still are, are, are working very hard, um, even though uh, things look different in, in terms of how ministries are function functioning. Um, so we're happy to be here, and we're happy to be of service to you guys. So um, you've been listening to Two Catholics Thinking. Um, we're going to take, I think, probably a quick little break before we transition to our next little segment, which I believe is, again, Father Shea in the gift shop. So I'm looking forward to this. So definitely, um, you know, uh, even if you can't stop by the parish office itself, um, definitely uh, make sure to tune in, maybe text somebody else and say, hey, check this out. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm guessing a bunch of free merchandise is going to be given away, but we'll see. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Brendan, and uh, we'll see you next time for Two Catholics Thinking.